Welcome to our comprehensive guide on syndesmotic instability in the ankle. We'll explore the anatomy, mechanisms of injury, and the role of surgical stabilization in managing both acute and chronic conditions. Ankle fractures are prevalent, accounting for over half of lower extremity fractures. Syndesmotic injuries, often seen in athletes, can lead to prolonged recovery and potential long-term disability, especially in young adults. Syndesmotic injuries with persistent instability require surgical intervention. Malreduction is a key predictor of poor outcomes, potentially leading to osteoarthritis within seven years in some cases. The distal tibial fibula syndesmosis is crucial for ankle stability, comprising two bones and four ligaments. These structures maintain the relationship between the tibia and fibula, stabilizing the talocrural joint. The anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, AITFL, is a key component of the syndesmosis, contributing significantly to its strength. It is often the first to yield under excessive external rotation forces. The posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, PITFL, provides substantial strength to the syndesmosis. Its robust nature often results in bony avals. The interosseous ligament, IOL, acts as a spring between the tibia and fibula, contributing to syndesmotic stability. It originates from the interosseous membrane and plays a minor role compared to other components. The deltoid ligament, while not part of the syndesmosis, is vital for mortis stability. It acts as a tether against lateral Taylor translation, with a high rate of concomitant injury in syndesmotic cases. Syndesmotic injuries often occur during forceful external rotation of the dorsiflex foot. These injuries are common in contact sports and can result in high fibula fractures with varying fracture patterns. Classification of syndesmotic injuries is based on symptomatology and radiographic findings. Grade one injuries are stable with mild symptoms, while grade three injuries show clear malalignment requiring surgical stabilization. Acute syndesmotic injuries should be suspected after rotational ankle injuries. Non-operative management is recommended for stable injuries, while surgical intervention is necessary for unstable cases. Diagnosis of syndesmotic injuries is challenging due to variable reliability of tests. A combination of history, examination, and imaging findings is essential for accurate diagnosis and management. Radiographic evaluation is crucial for computer tomography, CT, is more sensitive than radiography for detecting syndesmotic malalignment. Bilateral CT imaging is recommended for post-operative evaluation, especially in the presence of metal implants. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, is highly sensitive for detecting acute syndesmotic injuries. It is useful for diagnosing chronic disruptions and assessing concomitant injuries like ligament tears. Arthroscopy allows direct visualization of dynamic diastasis, aiding in the diagnosis of syndesmotic instability. It helps distinguish instability in multiple planes, providing valuable insights for surgical planning. Achieving reduction in syndesmotic injuries is critical. Techniques like manual reduction and direct open visualization are preferred over indirect methods to minimize malreduction rates. Screw fixation is a common method for syndesmotic stabilization. While bioabsorbable screws offer advantages like gradual stress transfer, metal screws remain popular due to their reliability and surgeon familiarity. Suture button fixation has gained popularity for syndesmotic injuries, offering benefits like lower malreduction rates and faster return to activity. However, it may not be suitable for all injury patterns. Syndesmotic ligament augmentation using non-absorbable suture tape is a promising technique. It provides dynamic stability and is increasingly used for both acute and chronic syndesmotic injuries. Arthrodesis may be considered for chronic syndesmotic instability with arthrosis. It involves joint fusion and is typically reserved for cases with severe incongruency or recurrent diastasis. In summary, syndesmotic injuries significantly impact athletic function and daily activities. Accurate diagnosis and appropriate surgical management are crucial for optimal outcomes and preventing long-term complications. Thank you for joining us in exploring the complexities of syndesmotic instability. 
We hope this guide has provided valuable insights into the diagnosis and management of these challenging injuries. 